Welcome to the teaching ministry of Power and Passion for Life. I'm Rev. Tim Tyler, pastor of Christ Community Church in Roseville, Michigan. It's my desire to teach the believer how to live in the power of the Spirit by having a passion for God's Word. Be blessed now as let's you listen. Let's stand together and let's praise God this morning. We're kids as well, just a little wider and taller, and, uh, but we all belong to Jesus, and so uh, this is Bible school this morning, right? To enjoy his presence. Father, we thank you for this morning, the ministry of your Holy Spirit in our midst, O oh God. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to pour out, to touch our hearts, to touch our lives, to open our eyes, to see your majesty, and to learn and know the truth. Come, Holy Spirit, pour out upon us as we open our hearts in worship and adoration to the majesty of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come and worship. Come and worship.
So I 
to be content in you, God. Help us to find our contentment in you, God, and not in things of this world. Help us to realize that you have everything we need in the palm of your hand, God. We turn to you this morning, Lord. We turn to you. We set our focus on you. We set our gaze on you this morning. We just want your presence in this place. We want your presence in our lives, God, more and more every day, Lord. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, is more than enough for me. Thank you, Jesus. Judge and our defender suffered and crucified. 
saints communion and in your holy church i believe in the resurrection when jesus comes again for i believe in the name of jesus i believe in god our father i believe in christ the son i believe in the holy Sing it out, sing it out, say it.
bless the Lord this morning. Come on, lift your hands and exalt Him in all of His glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify. side this morning. It's like we filled our pockets and filled our arms with carrying so much. Would you just drop everything, release everything, and wait on God this morning? Would you just empty ourselves before Him? That He would fill us. There's no room for Him. God, we just empty our hearts. Let's surrender our lives to the Lord. Let's surrender our agendas. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're not changing. We're not stopping. I want you to be seated in the presence of God. And let us just wait on the Lord. Let Him speak to you. Let Him woo you to rest in Him. Let's find our Sabbath this morning in Him. Our rest that we have entered in Christ Jesus.
so many verses that speak of the quiet and the still. Be still, know that I am God. The still, small voice of the Lord speaking. Let's rest in him this morning. Father, we thank you for peace that passes understanding. I pray this peace now. I pray this rest upon our souls that we would recognize you as Lord, healer, savior, protector. And we would be at rest in your arms. In Jesus' name. If you need that rest, would you say amen this morning? Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Let's turn to the word of the Lord, shall we? We're in the book of Ephesians. I would ask you to turn to Ephesians chapter 4. As an introduction last week, we looked at the apostolic prayer that Paul had so that the church could fully grasp who it was and what its assignment was. If you'll remember in that apostolic prayer, Paul prayed for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to be in the church. We need the Holy Spirit to unveil the realm of the kingdom to us. With that revelation and wisdom unveiled, he said, this is what I pray, this threefold prayer, that you would understand your calling, that we as a people would know that we have a calling, we have purpose. You as individuals have a calling on your life. God chose you and called you. Secondly, we would understand the inheritance, his provision, what he's given to us, so that it can equip us for this calling. And thirdly, he said that you would understand the power behind it, that you're called, you are equipped, and you are empowered to do this. Now that we have this understanding, we move into God's purpose for the church found in Ephesians chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 7 as you follow along with me. And he says this, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Let's stop there. What was given to us? Grace. Grace is a word in the Greek that is charis. It is also referenced as a gift. We talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the same word, charis. Those are the graces of the Spirit. Grace is freely given. It's not earned. It's a gift. Now, so we've been given grace according to the measure of Christ's grace and gifting. Christ's gift. Is he stingy? How does he give? Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. This grace that is bestowed to us, this gifting is given to the church. The church is gifted. The church is equipped. Oh, if we would understand, have wisdom and revelation to know how well we are equipped. And this grace is given to whom? All of us. Say it one more time. All of us. I'm going to show you today and throughout this series that I personally believe we have limited an understanding of the fivefold ministry to strictly offices. I believe that they are not offices, but they are in fact the very DNA of Christ himself given as grace to all of us. You look like your daddy. You're supposed to be shaped into the image of whom? Christ. So we have to have his DNA if we're going to become to look like him. And so he says, grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. He's quoting the Old Testament. He's talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, where Jesus broke the power of sin and death. He was able to take all the Old Testament saints who were righteous, 
who were held in Abraham's bosom out of that place and into the presence of God because now the resurrected Jesus sprinkles the blood of Christ on the altar and all who were captive can now be in the presence of God. And he gave gifts to men, gifts to the church. That's prophetic of what this is about. While saying he ascended, what does it mean that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? So he went down and he proclaimed in all realms. He is Lord in the heavenly realms. He descended into the earth and ministered here. At his death, he descended into the lower parts to declare his majesty as Messiah, leading those captives up back to ascend to heaven. Far above all the heavens, and this is an amazing statement, that he might what? Fill all things. So he's going to fill a few things up. What's the intention? He fills all things. Do you know he's doing that with your life? You know it is his desire to fill you up in all things, in all ways. Not to leave any nook or cranny. I don't know what that is. When I think of nooks and crannies, I, I think of English muffins, but... Like that butter that melts into all those crevices. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to fill us up. He doesn't want to leave any part of your heart untouched. He doesn't want to leave any part of your intellect untouched. He wants to fill us up. Not only is Christ supposed to fill us up, he's supposed to fill up planet earth, the heavens, and below the earth. He's supposed to fill how many things? all things. This is an expanding measure of the majesty of Christ. He's winning back the world and everything that was broken, everything that was fallen, everything that was discarded is to be redeemed and restored. That's the purpose of Christ. To bring everything back into completion and perfection. How many of you want to be a part of that? This is a good and beautiful and holy thing that God is expanding Christ. And here's the goal, so that he might fill all things. Now, how is he going to do that? That's the plan, but how is he going to fill all things? We have to grow up and be measured in Christ. We have to fill all things. Look at verse 11. And he gave some. So here it is. The very next verse. This is how he's going to execute this pro- this. Pro- Uh, a purpose that he has, this plan. So he gave some. Here's the graces. Here's the gifts. He gave gifts to men. He gave some to be apostles. This, uh, I'm going to read to you the best rendering of the Greek here. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some shepherds, some teachers. We call that fivefold. And we call those ministries, but they're beyond ministries. They're identities in Christ. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. I say shepherd because if I say pastor, you think of the guy standing at the front of the church. Many of you are shepherds. Many of you shepherd individual lives. Many of you shepherd children and adults and other people that that identity in Christ as a shepherd can apply to many of us, not just the guy that gets paid to preach. All right, so that five-fold apostolic. Here it is. This is the solution. Here's how he's going to do it. He gave grace to how many? All of us. But see, what we've done is we've isolated the five-fold into a few elect individuals. They're special. And I want to prove my point over the next number of weeks what are these this fivefold supposed to do to equip the saints for the work of ministry for building up the body of christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of god to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness or deceitful schemes. He is using a word picture, an analogy about a little infant child growing up into mature manhood. 
And what is that little child supposed to grow up and look like? Jesus. That's the picture. How many of you, when you had kids, when they were growing up, you would, you would put a mark at, at their height on a door? You ever see that? Put it on a doorpost or on a wall or anything like that. Look, you grew an inch this summer. You can hear them. Some kids, you can hear them growing at night like the corn. <laughs> Children of the corn, I don't know. But anyways, they grow up and you mark it. And that's what's been happening for 2,000 years for the church. We've been maturing, we've been growing up so that we will attain the full stature of Christ. Why? Because he is to fill all in all. How are we going to grow up to look like Christ? He gave us the graces of his identity. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. He gave that to the body of Christ so that it would equip us, perfect us, complete us into maturity so that we will be as he is in the earth. We're his body. That's the whole analogy of this thing. That's the whole analogy. He wants to do three things with this fivefold. I call it the DNA of Jesus with this fivefold grace that he's given to the body. What is it going to do? It is going to equip the saints. Now, when we think equip, we think of equipment shovels and spades and money and cash to get this job done. It's not what he's talking about. The word equip means to make one what he ought to be, to make us what we ought to be. The fivefold is making us into the image of Jesus. As apostolic, as prophetic, as evangelistic and shepherding and teaching. This, this is the fivefold ministry of Jesus when he was here. And he wants his body to continue to do that work. And so he's given us the same DNA of who he is and what he does so that it will cause the body of Christ to look like him, act like him, and, be, and portray him to the world. So that if you see us, you see Jesus. Isn't that the goal? How are you doing on that? You are equipped for it. And so we're going to take a look at that. It means to complete. It means to mend together, to sew together, to make and equip something into what it ought to be for the work of serving. I'm changing words because we have an intellect when it says to equip the saints for the work of ministry. All of us think of ministry in the sense of churches and pulpits. And that's not what this is about. The word is diakonos. I don't know, it's, this thing's acting up again. The word is diakonos. Do you know where we get what other word we use comes from diakonos? Deacon. Do you know what a deacon is? Servant. We are to be equipped like Jesus so that we will serve the world. What are we serving them? The kingdom of God. The love of Christ. The ministry of our Father. For the work of serving. To make us what we ought to be for the work of serving, last of all, building up or growing up the body of Christ. You know, I, I find it interesting that many people who want to be mature in Christ and want to operate in the power and the dunamos of God put themselves up on pedestals when in fact the greater the anointing of God on your life, the greater a servant you will become. This is the teaching of Jesus Christ. The greatest among you will be the least. I did not come to be served. I came to serve. This is the image of Christ. 
if the church is going to get this right, we've got to stop having rock star preachers and TV evangelists that are famous and rich and get into the ministry of serving a dying world and a broken world with the love of Christ and the healing touch of God. We'll go into the depths of where hell is to reach the lost and minister the Lord to them. This is the maturity of Christ, and this is what we're being measured by. So he says to equip or make us what we ought to be for the work of serving and building up the maturity of the church. That's what the fivefold is supposed to accomplish. Now he goes on with his analogy and he says this, so that we will attain to the unity of faith. How's that doing right now? The unity of faith. The church is united like never before, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's funny. It's so sad. You can't go on YouTube to try and find a sermon. Basically, the sermons are no longer about the Word of God. The sermons are about what's wrong with that preacher and that preacher and that preacher. Boy, for young Christians who are trying to find an edifying word, you won't find it from the church. We're slicing and dicing one another. We're cutting each other apart. How are we ever going to get to the unity in building together? It's got to have the nature of Christ in it, not the nature of man. And so he goes on and he says, we're going to reach the full knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ. Again, the fullness of Christ is to fill all things, all in all. This fullness. I want a fullness in my life. How many of you want a fullness in your life of Christ? I need fullness. I need you to fill me up where I lack. I need you to extract that which is blocking your fullness in my heart. I want to know what it is to walk in the apostolic walk as a prophetic ministry, walk in evangelizing and reaching, walk in pastoring, shepherding, walking in teaching and instruction. If I would walk like Jesus, we could meet those five essential areas that the world is dying for. It's the full stature of Christ. I can't wait for when we come together and we feel that full manifestation of Jesus in the house. Amen? Nothing lacking, nothing wanting. And he says this, he goes on with the analogy and he says, so that we're no longer children tossed to and fro in the waves. This is what the church can look like if it's not mature. A baby being tossed. This is Paul's analogy. A baby being tossed in the waves. Is that what the church looks like right now? We're being tossed by every Wind of doctrine, right? Knocked around, to and fro, pushed around. And it doesn't mean church doctrine. Knocked around by the waves, it can be our culture. We're being pushed around by our culture. We're being pushed around by ideologies and speculations. We're just being tossed all over the place. And he goes on and he says, not only that, the waves... He says, but we're carried away by every wind of doctrine. Do, if we're not on the rock of Christ, if we're not mature to stand against the wind, it'll knock us over. Where are Christians supposed to be when it comes to storms? We're to be walking on the water. Not knocked to and fro. We're to be speaking to the wind and the waves saying, be silent for this is the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. This is the word of truth. And we'll stand. We'll not be knocked over. We'll not be pushed aside. But there needs to be a maturity of the presence of Christ in what we're doing. Maturity in knowing Him and knowing what to do in this hour. Why? Because he says there's three things. If you're immature as a church, three things. Number one, the winds of doctrine. They blow us around. 
Number two, human craftiness and deceitful schemes. If we're immature, if we're little children, the candy man will come by. Come here, little boy. Want to have some candy? How many times has the devil schemed to disrupt the growing and the maturity of the church? Paul says that if we're not mature, human craftiness, human scheming, it's going to take over the church. The worst part is when the human scheming takes place in the church. We need to be wise. Wise as serpents, harmless as dove, but wise to understand the schemes that are going on of the flesh. And he says deceitful schemes, demonic schemes, demonic doctrines of demons. There's a lot coming against the church. How many of you know that? Right? Oh, if we just had something that would keep us stable. Something that we could walk in, that God had a plan for us. He gave us the grace, the gift of the fivefold. That we would understand the foundations, the apostolic foundations that God has given the church of what to believe, the doctrines of the church and the faith, the prophetic vision to stay on course with what God is doing, the evangelist outreach to reach those who are lost so that we would increase in numbers and we would shepherd them and grow and mature as a people, teaching them the knowledge of God. This is the fivefold ministry. And it will attain us into the maturity of Christ. That's God's goal. That's what he has planned for us. So that we would attain the full stature of Christ. But I think many times we don't look like Jesus, do we? We look like infants being tossed back and forth. Let me ask you, let me put this into the personal realm. How's your house? How's your household? How's your household of faith? How's your life walking out in the maturity of Christ? Are you mature in Christ? Are you on a foundation sure? Are you hearing the Lord prophetic? Are you reaching to others with this love? Are you shepherding and caring? Are you instructing and growing? You can't stand still because you're just going to be tossed. How many of you feel tossed by the waves? How many of you feel blown by the winds. We've been tried over these last year and a half. I'll be honest with you, I was disappointed in the church. Universal. When adversity came, it didn't seem that many stood in faith, reaching and caring for one another. It seems like we abandoned each other for ourselves. We need the full stature. How is the stature of your faith in your household? Are you growing into the maturity of Christ? This is what God's asking us for. And so I'm asking you to grow in that fivefold stature, being anchored apostolic in the government of God and the authority of His Word, to have an ear to the prophetic, to know what you should do in the times that you're in. To reach those who are around you. This isn't a, a me only thing. This is to reach the lost. To shepherd other lives. And to teach. How many of you know when you shepherd and care for others, you grow? This is what God's looking for. Let's finish off this portion of scripture. Verse 15. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head pretty direct statement isn't it if we will speak love we'll know love you got to know it to speak it if you know God's love for you if you know his provision for you if you understand it we will grow up in every way into him who is the head so the body of Christ has got to mature into the full stature of what the head looks like Jesus Christ does that sound good this is a great adventure. How many of you want to go on it with me? How many of you want to mature in Christ Jesus? Yeah. To see him and experience him and see what he can do through his body. 
He is the head. We're going to grow up in every way into him who is the head unto Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together in every joint with which it is equipped. Every joint and ligament we're equipped, we're, we're made with. He's using that same analogy and reference, what you're growing up into what you ought to be. You're equipped with that. When each part is working properly, making the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Each part of the body growing properly. Well, he gave us a description of the body of Christ. What was it? Fivefold, each part working together. That system working together will grow the body into maturity. It's not, I'll get into that next week. <laughs> Let's keep going. Each part working properly, making the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Here we go. Until we all attain to the unity of faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the work of the church. This is why we're here. We're growing up into the full stature of the full measure of Christ. I believe that this message is going to gain power and gain understanding in the church universal over the next number of years. Because if we're going to grow up and be mature, we've got to understand the ministry of the fivefold that God gave us 2,000 years ago that we've set aside. The church has basically set it aside and said, well, apostles, prophets, that's over. And so it's got to reemerge. And in doing this, it is going to bring us to the full measure of the stature of the fullness or the full identity of Jesus. Do you see the picture he has? He said, Christ ascended into the heavenlies. That's the head. So that the body from the earth will grow up into the head. We've got to grow so that everything in the earth comes under the authority of the head, Christ Jesus. And that's what the body of Christ is doing, maturing and growing, bringing the influence of the head of Christ into the earth and maturing as the body of Christ. We're to grow up in every way. Into him who is the head, into Christ. When each part is properly working, making the body grow up, into the love of Christ. That's what Christ came to bring. God so loved the world, he gave his son. And the son has given us the fivefold to duplicate his ministry. Let's begin seeking God for that, amen? The fivefold is here in our midst. The fivefold is in our lives. And we're going to unpack this more and more. And you're going to realize that you have this DNA of Christ in you. We don't have to pay professionals for it. It's in the body. Let's bow our heads. God, I thank you. You have a plan for this planet. You have a plan to use us as the people of God. And you're calling us to grow. You're calling us to mature. You're calling us to work together, each our own parts and in our way. I'm calling for us as a people of God to mature. I'm speaking to each person in this room. To put away childish things. And to grow up in Christ. That's what Paul said. In the book of Corinthians, Paul said, when I was a child, I played with childish things. I want to take the time of ministry right now. 
We've worshiped the Lord and opened our heart. We've heard the word and had it poured in. Now, let's respond. Holy Spirit, search us. Begin to show us the childish things we're holding on to. It's time to stop eating candy. have a good diet of the meat of God's word. It's time to put away the pacifier. To stop sucking our thumbs. It's time to walk in maturity and get the healing that you need. It's time to get out of the strollers. It's time to put away the toys. And it's time to grow up in Jesus. There is a world that is literally falling apart. It is under the destructive hand of Satan. There are young people and children who are absolutely broken and lost in their identity. It's not us versus them. It's us working for them serving to reach the lost. So I'm asking, Holy Spirit, would you begin to point out our immaturity in our own individual lives? What childish things must we put away? Listen to the voice of the Lord right now. What is it time for you to put away? Are there childish attitudes? Is there childish speech? Are you distracted? Holy Spirit, come now and convict so that we would grow up. God wants to advance your spiritual maturity. There are works that Christ has for you to do which he has already prepared. They're waiting for you. Prepare yourself. If you feel that God has revealed something for you to put away, a childish thing, something that has been a play toy with you or an immature action, Stand with me so that we can pray right now. And as an act of faith, we're saying we're done with it. We're putting away childish things. We're going to walk in maturity. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. I can pray for you, but this is the decision of your will. This is between you and Jesus. What he sees when he sees you is you in your full stature and full maturity. You don't see yourself that way, but he sees you that way. Let's lay aside every weight that hinders us, everything that distracts. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children, your beautiful, beautiful children, your empowered sons of God. I pray for those standing who are saying, yes, I'm ready for maturity. Those who are ready to lay aside the things that so easily beset them. Those who are ready to put aside childish things, attitudes, Distractions. Father, I pray that an anointing will come so filled with joy, that so full of the fragrance of Christ and, 
an embrace from Jesus that causes us to act and respond to Him. You're growing up in Christ. You're looking more like Him. You're sounding more like Him. He's active in your heart and He's stirring you right now. It's the love of Christ that is bubbling up. You're saying, yes, I'm done with the lesser things. I'm going to walk in the power and the anointing of Christ Himself. I don't need these distractions. I'm ready to grow in Christ. I release that knowledge of revelation and wisdom. You would understand your call of God. You would know that you're equipped through the inheritance of the Spirit. And the power of God is upon you. Walk, O Son of God, in strength. You're going to walk and not grow weary. Run and not be faint. You're going to rise up as on wings as eagles. You're exchanging your strength for His. Because today you've made this decision to walk in the maturity of Christ. I release that anointing, an open door right now that Christ has put before you. Holy Spirit, come and fill us in Jesus' name. If you'll receive it, say amen this morning. Receive it, receive it. Come on, everybody, stand. Yeah, we receive it. We receive it. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son. The church is rising up in this hour to full maturity. His apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers are in the house. And we're going to look like Jesus. Sing that chorus with me. I believe in God our Father. I believe Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Come on everybody, sing it out, it's our declaration. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of What name do you believe in? For I believe in the name of One more time, I believe. For I believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. You look like Jesus. You sound like Jesus. <laughs> you act like Jesus. More and more each day you do. Your neighborhood is, is seeing it. Your, your co-workers are, are wondering what's going on. You're starting to look and act like him in greater measures. Isn't this good? It's exciting. And as you grow, you're going to find yourself more adept at the things that Christ does. You're going to find yourself excited to speak kingdom, to release blessing. This is the church of the Lord. God bless you this morning. Continue to grow in His name. Amen? Amen. As I... <laughs> God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now go forth in the maturity of Christ and walk in His grace. Amen. God bless you.